Uh, the coach excited about the uh, challenge of the W League season ahead? It's a great challenge. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, it, it's really it's been an honor to be part of this team and, and uh, what the team has achieved in the past few years. And it's been a really amazing journey for, for the players and to be part of it. Uh, I really feel privileged and I'm going to try to do my best to achieve similar results and uh, you know, try to do even better stuff with the ball and without the ball. So looking forward to it. I can't actually think of too many sides in Australian sport that have won the last three championships. So does that make your job hard, that anything less than a championship you know, doesn't cut it this close? No, it, it, well, it, every job is hard, uh, but you know, the players that we have signed and the players that we have retained makes the job a little bit easier. Um, I think now up to me is to, to challenge them and, and, and you know, to try to, to slightly change the way we played. To make it more difficult for opponents and and to make it maybe more enjoyable for for them. So um, I think we're on a good path to achieve that. Now we'll just see how our results will follow. It, it seems like you'll be starting the season without a few senior players, Matilda's and internationals. Who, who's not here for the for the first game in Canberra? Uh, I probably it would be better be to start who's here. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> I still haven't seen Teresa Nielsen. She just arrived, I think, uh, yesterday. So we'll see how she um, how she is today and see if she can play on uh, on Sunday. Uh, we're still waiting for Tamika Bhatt. Uh, KK, she is uh, still playing, I think, one more round in uh, in Europe. Uh, we are waiting for for Kinga. She is in China. And then, unfortunately, we've got a few injuries that uh, the girls are here, but they are not available. So we are m missing quite a few, but uh, the ones that, that are here, I'm quite sure they're going to do everything in their power to you know, get us a, a good result and good performance. Good opportunities for the girls. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, we've signed Chelsea and Mia, and uh, both of them will probably start on Sunday. So it's one 18-year-old, one 15-year-old to start. Uh, it's amazing, and, and for the for a big club as uh, uh, Melbourne City, it's is uh, you know it's a dream come true for them. And what have you made of Canberra? Um, Michelle hasn't been there for the first time in a while. Um, what, what to be you honest, I, I'm not a great expert on, on other teams. Um, I haven't really seen. I've, I've seen some footages from last year, but there've been so many changes yeah. uh, in personnel and, and coaching staff. Uh, I watched the game last night, uh, Western Sydney versus Sydney, the derby. Um, quite impressed with uh, Sydney FC, and uh, to be honest, Western Sydney they they had some good chances as well, had some good opportunities. You know, on some other day it could have been a little bit different result, but I think uh, you know everyone is saying that Canberra is one of the the better teams in, in competition, so it's going to be a tough encounter for us. Uh, but uh, we'll see what we can do. <coughs> yeah, um, I mean it's. Not really foreign though anymore. I think the last two seasons we've had people come in late or injuries. So, I mean, it's pretty standard, I guess, from <laughs> the city to not have everyone um, at full strength at the beginning of the season. What's the answer to that? I mean, it's really hard with overlapping seasons and, and different commitments and people coming in. Is there no answer? You just got to lump it? Or can we do better? Or? Um, you know, obviously, at the end of the day, I think, you know, the PFA and FFA are working really hard to try and get, you know, full 14 rounds and home and away, but also, you know, it, that doing that would um, affect our opportunities to play overseas. So, you know, right now I don't think there is a very good answer. I had a bit of a break, so I feel good. So maybe that's the answer. Everyone just gets a, a month off um, after their season's done. It seems like, um, I don't know whether it's Savage's plan or individual plan, whether, but there has been an emphasis on, emphasis on giving everyone in the Matilda set up a bit of a break, leading into a huge sort of eight-month clock. Is that that's right? Or? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, a lot of us have had, you know, no real rest and have gone gone on periods of a couple of years now with no real break and gone back to back. And uh, obviously he's, you know, a little bit worried. We've, you know, voiced our concerns before. So he's obviously worried just to, you know, we have a World Cup coming up and qualifiers and Olympics. So really right now there's, there's no opportunity for a break. So, you know, working with him and the staff with the national team to try and get, you know, those players that needed it an opportunity to have, you know, a football mentally and physically, I think was a, a good choice. Okay, and, and just on City, um, 
Are you guys ready? Are you ready to burst out of the blocks more weekend despite some people being away? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, riders obviously work really hard with the girls that have been here um, and, you know, their understanding of football and how we want to play. Um, so, you know, he he's, hasn't really said this is the starting lineup or this is what's going to happen. So everyone's had the opportunity to fulfil their, you know, a, a get a chance to play. So, um, you know, even now I'm not even sure who's going to start. So <laughs> You won. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I think whoever he puts out on the field is, is going to understand that this is it. Like, we have to play and you are selected to, to play. Cool. And can I ask you about the derby last night? Did you watch? Yeah, I watched uh, most of it. So it was it was a good game. Um, you know, obviously, I think a lot of teams are in the same boat of people coming in late and not really having a chance to really mesh um, all that well. So Sydney's obviously um, retained quite a few of their players and um, Wanderers have made you know, a number of people switching clubs. So um, it was interesting. It was a big field. It got pretty spread out at the end of the game, um, a little bit messy. But, uh, you know, I think that's just first game. I think, you know, once we get into the middle of the season, you're going to see a lot better football being played. And a lot of people have tipped in to be maybe with you guys the biggest threat to the championship or the, the four-peat or whatever we're calling it here. How would you describe them as a force or on a performance like that? Um, you know, they're strong. You know, obviously last year they played, they made the final. They, you know, did great things during the league. But, um, you know, I think that the thing that City have proven year and year as we've gone on is, you know, we might not have the best season and people might have counted us out. But when it comes down to, you know, playoffs and championships, everyone kind of knows how to turn it on. And that's the experience that we have with the girls that are here, have been a part of the club and who we've, um, you know, selected come in the squad. Okay, so no talk of the fourth championship just yet. No, we have to make it at least at least the halfway through in the playoffs and then we'll go from there. <laughs>